For this next topic and example, we want to take a deeper look at the margin of error and understand its relationship to the confidence interval a little bit better. So let's look. A recent HuffPost article found that the pollsters are 95% confident that percentage of all U.S. adults that believe that, quote, the U.S. should take a global leadership role in trying to prevent climate change, end quote, is between 57.8 and 64.2%. Okay, perfectly fine. Now let's get some review questions in here. What is the parameter being estimated? So it's the total, the percent of all of all U.S. adults um, that would say um, or that believe. Oops, so we're not gonna have enough room. <laughs> the U.S. Uh, what was this? The U.S. should take. I'm just gonna write should take global leadership. Da, 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 da. I'm just gonna put that in there, right? So it's P, right? It's it's letter P. It's the population proportion. All right. Now the confidence interval being given is 57.8 percent to 64.2 percent. Right, that's the confidence interval. So now we want to draw a graphic. So if we have the center of our confidence intervals right here, the interval itself goes from 57.8%, or if you like, you could write those as a decimal, to 64.2%. So if you want, you can write this as 0.578 and 0.642. Just keep it consistent. Right. Either you do them all as decimals or all as percents. And if you do percents, make sure you put the little percent sign in there. All right. Now, what is the point estimate of this interval? Ooh, and label it on the graph. Well, I already did label it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a color. Sorry. Every time I grab that thing, it's got dog fur attached to it. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> My dogs have black fur. Okay. So, right down the middle. Let's see if I can get this. Right down the middle is our point estimate, which is p hat. All right, now let's think about this. If it's in the center, then we should be able to find it because the center of two numbers like that would be the average of the two, right? You're looking for the middle. So if I take the lower number and I add to it the higher number, so I take 0.578 and I add to it 0.642 and I divide by two, that should find me the mean of those two numbers, which is the center of this interval. Remember to put parentheses around it. Now we've seen that formula before. It was way back in section, I believe 9.1, let me double check. Indeed it was in section 9.1, right there. The point estimate is the lower plus the upper divided by two with parentheses around it because you're looking for the center of that interval. All right, so then that means I can add these two up. So let me grab a calculator. Uh, it's easier on Desmos because on Desmos, I can make it look like it's going to look. So I can say, okay, make it, I press the division bar first. So if I press the division bar first, I can say 0.578 plus 0.642 and then I can use my arrow key and press two, and there it is, 0.61. Now, if you're on the calculator, it's a little bit harder. You can do a fraction thing. If you hit, sorry, if you hit alpha y equals and hit number one, then you can make it look like a fraction, just like, oop, except you can't type too fast on these programs because then they don't take it. <laughs> so just like Desmos looks, but if that's a little too hard, you can do 0.578 plus 0.642 close parentheses, right, half parentheses around there, and then divide by two. Either way, any one of those ways is fine. You get 0.61. So the middle of that interval is 0.61 or 61%. Either way. Either use all decimals or all percents. Either, either way you like it. All right, now what about that error? The error is this distance right here. Right, from the outer edge to that center. So we saw the formula for that back in section 9.1 as well. So let me go grab it. It was 
the upper minus the lower divided by two, right? Because what you're doing is you're trying to say, hey, look, there's a total distance here. I want half of that distance. Well, the distance is from 0.642 down to 0.578. So you take the higher number minus the lower number. So error is the upper, which was 0.642 minus the lower, which was 0.578, and we divide by two. And I have a lot of students say, you know, oh, I lose track of which one's which. Well, think about what they are, right? This is an average. You add and you divide by two. That will get you a center. This is a distance, right? Because you're subtracting. So, all right, so let's see here. I'll do the calculator because the calculator is the most difficult. And if you're going to do it on the calculator, I recommend putting parentheses, or excuse me, parentheses in there. So 0 0.642 minus 0 0.578. Close parentheses, divide by 2, enter, and you get 0 0.032. So that's this distance right here, but also this distance right here. Or you could write it as 3.2%, either way. I suppose I've been writing more percents up here, so I'll actually change this and make it 3.2% just because I've been writing more percents than I've been decimals. There we go. Either way is fine. Like I said, it's not, not that the decimals were wrong. It's just I've been writing percents, so I'll just keep with it. Now, what about the width of the interval? Well, the width of the interval is the distance from the lowest part to the highest part. Right? It's the total distance there. So the width is two errors, right? So it's the upper minus the lower. Or in other words, it's two times the margin of error. Right? Now, if you don't believe me, let me, let me show it to you. 0.642, take away 0.578, and then two times 0.032. I bet you they come out to be the same thing. Let me show it to you. All right, so 0 0.642 minus 0 0.578, right? Upper minus lower, that's the width. 2 times 0 0.032. Oop, 0.578. Here, hold on. Clear. Come back up. I didn't type my 8. Well, I did, but I typed too fast, and it doesn't register it on this program. There we go, 0 0.064. And then 2 times 0.032. There we go. See? Either way, it's 0 0.064 or 6.4%. Both are perfectly valid. The width and the error, by the way, notice the relationship there. I mean, they're very closely related. So we can make a little note, right? These two are very closely related. Essentially, when this is just double, right? The width is just twice that. So error and width are basically the same thing. Um, they're very closely related. Very, very <laughs> closely related. It's a little note. And we just saw the width formula, right? We just kind of just kind of snuck that in on you. <laughs> Did you notice it? And I'll highlight it. I'm actually going to highlight it before I write it because that'll make it. And actually, I'm going to get I'm going to give you guys two options here. So the width is the upper minus the lower, or it's two times the margin of error. I ran out of space with my yellow there. But that's okay, right? So there's two formulas for it, right? It's two times that error, or it's the upper minus the lower, either way you want to find it. Now, if you have a larger margin of error, think about what that means, right? All right, so let's look at this example. If the margin of error increases to 4.5%, what would that mean for the width? Well, the width, width is 2 times the error. So to be 2 times, instead of 0 0.032, it'd be 0 0.045, which is 0.09. I mean, I can prove it to you if you don't believe me. 
right? 2 times 0 0.045. See, I was right. There we go. Which is 9%. So that's answering this part right here, right? So if you have a larger margin of error, look at what happens when you compare F and G. When you increase that margin of error, you increase that width because they go together, right? So this part right here is examples F versus G, right? So when you compare F and G with each other, you can see that making a larger error makes a larger width and vice versa, right? That goes by hand, they go back and forth between the two. because the width and the error are essentially interchangeable. I mean, the, the error is just um, half of the width, right? The width is twice the error. They're, they're very, very, very closely related. 